Hello, it's me, Sasha Velour, and today I'm going to do my makeup, and you're going to watch. Okay. First step is covering my eyebrows. I used to shave my eyebrows every single day. Then the world just became full of eyebrows, people, and I decided to grow mine back. It was my biggest quarantine project. Now I'm pretty proud of my ability to cover them with glue. So we're gonna start out with a little isopropyl alcohol spray to get any natural oils out to destroy our skin and build it back. Now I've got my Ben Nye spirit gun. When you shave your eyebrows, the makeup goes on so smoothly, like butter. I kind of love seeing a little brow hair. It says, this is drag. So I can really try to get my fingers tacky. I can really hold those eyebrows. It should hurt. Today, I'm going to be doing my makeup from the book cover of my book, The Big Reveal, an illustrated manifesto of drag, coming out April 2023 from Harper Books. And it's a little twist on my signature face, a pink glitter eye, and a glossy red lip. Good old Elmer's washable glue stick, the purple kind. People with less extreme brows can just use glue stick, but for those of us with fluffy caterpillars, we gotta use the spirit gum first. And let it dry in a couple layers. My first makeup look was Dracula, and it was a Halloween look. Uh, I didn't even know what Dracula was, just that it was like a thing that the mean boys at school teased me about because they called me a Dracula because I was so pale and had such dark hair. <laughs> uh, but we bought some theater makeup for Dracula and I got to have bright red lips and a white face. And I did like a red eye makeup. Not so dissimilar from this. Then I finally got real makeup doing community theater in Illinois. That's when I discovered Ben Nye, which I still use to this day. I'm gonna put a little powder in these brows. And I got this kind of standard kit that they make everyone, all the little kids in community theater get. It was like Caucasian male two or something. And I experimented with every single piece in that kit. I would use the beard stubble and draw on a beard. I would use the lip colors and give myself red lips. And that's kind of what I still love about it is that you can look different than what you are born with through makeup. And that transformation feels so empowering in a world that is obsessed with locking you in to what you're allowed to be. With makeup, you can say, well, I can be anything. And then fluffy brush it away. And then covering it with more foundation, trying to get all that color away. It's like a spoonful. That's the stuff. Back to my true self. <laughs> this is how I was born. Earrings and all. And then a little more powder. I just like to lock everything in place. And I wanted to do a pink eye to match the color of the book. Everything is overthought out for <laughs> this project. So let's dive in with the pink. I'm using the same pink that I used all over my head <laughs> for Smoke and Mirrors. So I'm gonna paint um, the cat eye that I usually do in black in pink. Learning how to do makeup for a deep set eye was so hard. That's why I don't really vary it up that much because there aren't that many things that look cute on me, but I'm still trying new things. These tiny little sharp brushes are so good. I have like six of them, so I don't have to clean them when I'm doing my makeup. Just use one for each color. The cover photo for the book is shot by Tanner and Nicholas, who have taken lots of my 
favorite editorial shots. The interior photos are all by Medi Ostrowski, who is currently behind the camera right now. <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> and the inspiration was 90s cosmetic ads, like as intimate and commercial as possible. I need to make lots of frowny faces. My obsessive powdering. I like to spray a little water or fancy MAC water. Try to get that, get some of the powder off and bring that color back. I learned this trick from my partner Johnny who told me that's what they did to set their cat's makeup is brightly colored is that you always spray and then dab with a cloth and when you're done it's not going anywhere. I'm gonna take a little fluffy brush and my favorite pink shadow from MAC, Full Fuchsia. The book tells the history of drag charting all the different forms of queer and non-binary expression in the arts from shamans and kabuki theater to pageants and balls and, of course, modern day drag and beyond. And I use my own story and my experiences from growing up to discovering my identity. It especially honors my grandmothers who introduced me to drag. My grandma Dina, who was Ukrainian Jewish immigrant who was born in China in the middle of the war. And she knew about drag from living in San Francisco in the 60s and going to see shows at Finocchio's with her friends. And my grandma Jo, a libertarian from Michigan, knew about drag from being on military bases in the 40s and seeing girly shows. Even though sometimes queer expression was restricted in real life, our queer ancestors found ways to be themselves, sometimes through the arts. And that's why drag is so important. Of course we need to truly exist in our full queer selves. We need more than just art. We need laws that restrict guns. We need laws that protect gender expression. But those conversations sometimes can start at the drag show. We can keep reminding people what we need by showing them how beautifully we can live and twirl and transform. You can buy expensive cosmetic glitter, but they have better colors at the art store for like a couple dollars. This is craft store glitter in the color Red Rose, although it is pink, so maybe this is the wrong cap. And I'm gonna put on glitter on my eyes. I don't really know how to do it, so I'm gonna do it the same way I do glitter on my lips, which is with this Makeup Forever Mist and Fix spray and a very ugly brush. I think the uglier the brush, the better it can grab the glitter. There will be glitter everywhere. I also love art store glitter because it is cheaper. You should not spend too much money on makeup. It's all a scam. If anything, spend it on skincare so you can survive after you take the makeup off. I'm gonna use some tape to remove the glitter from my face. Now I'm going to paint my face. I have already shaved my face and my head and my chest and my hands. <laughs> but I used to have to shave a lot more, but I got some gorgeous laser hair removal that makes it a breeze. I've got my Makeup Forever primer. I feel like I look more and more like my drag character out of drag. Smooth skin, bushy eyebrows. Makes me feel great. It's like doing drag has helped me figure out what is possible and find ways of being even more comfortable in my own skin. Today I'm gonna try the Fenty Pro Filter. Oh, it says Shake Well. This is where I do my highlight. I used to always paint it on after making my entire face one color, but kind of saves time to do the lightest part first. Now a more matching tone, Krylon 3W TV paint stick. Yeah, I've used this foundation 
from the very first time I started drag. I always paint a V on my neck. I'm gonna blend this and then do my head. Now, I'm a firm believer that if you are going to have your head out with no wig or headpiece, you need to put makeup all over. Paint the grid. I'm using a TN2 Krylon TV paint stick just to get a little contour. I really didn't use very much in this photo. The face really helps. Any queen will tell you. And my next stage is using a small angle brush to pencil in my nose contour and my eyebrows. There are no rules for beautiful eyebrows. You do you. I like to start mine right where my real eyebrow starts and then immediately go vertical. <laughs> my brushes are falling apart. I'm even gonna sketch in the fluffy spike. So all this work just to give myself as full a brow as I had before I put anything on. This is the last remaining piece of my winning Anastasia Beverly Hills makeup collection. A cream contour kit in fair. And I, I like this really light color for my nose contour. The ritual of transformation. It's like a kind of armor for your face. Now that I have the face sketched out, I'm gonna go back with a little more highlight and fill in like the sides of my face. My Ben Nye Clown White, I always do under the brow. Kind of connect that with the cheekbone. When I'm in Sasha Velour face, I feel unflappable, partly because I have painted on a permanent confident expression. The little nose tip. I like to put some here in my wrinkles, what wrinkles? I always put a little here, and then a little on the sides of my nose. Why not? Blend it. A little highlight on the jaw, but not too much. And now, we powder. Ben Nye Neutral Set Colorless Powder. Poudre in color, eh? not up your nose, you haven't done it off. My makeup room is covered with a fine coating of this powder. <laughs> I think that's enough powder. my MAC water. Doing my part. And then a little, just Sephora powder foundation. So I guess it's a little unnecessary, but I think it kind of smooths and refines. My biggest drag makeup inspiration are Divine, of course. The like classic drag eye comes from Divine. Mei Lan Fang from Chinese opera of the early 1900s. She painted her entire face like a light peony pink and then used blush like pretty much over her entire eye in the fuchsia not so unlike this. Oh, and uh, Lee Bowery, of course. The experimental makeup, the kind of clown take on drag makeup. I always look to Lee Bowery. This is kind of a darker color than the fuchsia, so I'll use this at the base of the contour cheek to make it pop. I always believe in putting a little blush on my ears. Continue that up around the brow, blush on the chin. Under the nose. No, I'm just fussing. And then I'm gonna go back in one last time and kind of clean up the edges here. More kind of 
dotting the makeup and sweeping it because I don't want to mess up the glitter. Just really snatched garage doors. I'm going to use this Kimchi Drama Queen palette, the highlight palette. I'll try this spread like butter. And highlight, of course, here, 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 here. I do a little black from my very old soft glam palette from Anastasia. In the old days, I used to always wear a lower lash, but as I grow into my makeup, I find it makes me look a little desperate. So now I only wear a lash if I want to look just a wee bit strung out. You know, sometimes the occasion calls for it. Yeah, I'm basically touching my eye with this brush. That feels so good. And then I'm gonna take this fantastic product from Patrick Star. It's a very sharp liner brush, and I'm gonna put that in my waterline. Okay, the secret to sharp, gorgeous eyeliner is your angle brush and continuously wiping it clean with a paper towel. I'm just going to use black eyebrows today. Inglot 77 gel liner. I'm going to paint my eyebrows with this. Everyone should have a signature element of their drag makeup. Something you've never seen someone else do that you invent for your face. And for me, it is my spiky three-part eyebrow. The origin of this eyebrow was a performance I did in 2015 where I portrayed a moth who lived in a closet munching on vintage furs and drinking sweet cocktails out of my straw proboscis. And I just love the way that they looked on my face. And I kind of have been doing it ever since. I got made fun of in high school for my unibrow. Drag is the perfect place to exaggerate the things you're insecure about and turn them into your signature. Lip liner is a must for a drag lip. I'm gonna use MAC Cherry. The shape of your lips is so important. It's where you draw your emotion, your expression. I like to draw the upper lip like a seagull flying in the distance. If you do like a really sharp Cupid's bow, it makes you look a little evil, which maybe is what you're looking for. But yeah, I like a inviting red, I always draw a little upturned smile at the end, so even when I'm exhausted and upset, I still look like I've got a sexy secret. And then my bottom lip, I draw like kind of a straight line at the bottom, and then fill it in, at least the edges. Line on the inside helps. You want to at least blend it into where your real lips start. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with liquid lipstick. I have this bright orangey red. Paint it as close to the edge as you can get. On stage, I love a glitter lip, but in up close, it looks a little inhuman. Certainly not very inviting. Sometimes after I put lipstick on, I'm like, you need more blush. Now one of my favorite products, a little final highlight from MAC. This one's called Vanilla, and it's just a really shimmery powder. I usually leave my lip gloss for the last step so that if I want to eat or drink anything, I can do that. This is Pat McGrath in Blood. It also smells good. Oh, I should be careful. I bought some of these fluffy caterpillar mink lashes, because I thought if you're gonna be that close to my eye, it should be really soft. And nothing else on my face is. I use the Duo Clear Eyelash Adhesive. Dip the edge of the lash in it. I do have to cut all my lashes first. I have worn these before on the cover, which is why they are covered in pink glitter. All waterproof mascara is exactly the same. It's really about what kind of bottle you respond to. I get as close to the mirror as I can physically get with my little tweezers. Put these on. Angle up on the edge slightly, hold it in place. Right above the eyelash in the center. Trying to get them at the same angle as each other. Final spray, why not?
I indulged for the cover, and then to counteract that cost, I made some accompanying jewelry out of Sculpey. You can hardly tell the difference at all. What, what's the designer and what is made of Sculpey? Painted gold. It's impossible to know. Got my wig on. This wig is inspired by the way my grandma Dina always wore her beautiful jet black hair. There's still wig tape on this. Isn't that nice? So we got that. <clears throat> and then my faux goat fur gloves, suitably satanic. And now, Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos.